I read all the bullets. Okay. The one with the okay, one is powers and duties. The mayor, the mayor should be responsible to the council for the proper administration of all affairs of the city and the enforcement of the laws and ordinances, except as herein otherwise provided. And that to that end, he shall have authority to appoint and remove all administrative officers and employees. He shall attend all meetings of the council and his committees with the right to participate in their discussion, but he shall have no vote. He shall prepare and submit to the council an annual budget after receiving estimates made by the directors of the departments, and shall perform such and other duties as may be prescribed by this charter and orders of the resolution of the council. This is section 20, powers and duties. General disqualifications, section 111. No member of the council, the mayor, or any other officer or employee of the city shall be directly or indirectly interested in any contract, job, work, or service with or for the city, nor in the profits or emoluments thereof, nor in the expenditure of any money on the part of the city. In any contract with the city in which the off any officer or employee is or becomes interested may be declared void by the council. No member of the council, the mayor, or other officers or employee of the city shall knowingly accept any gift, frank, free ticket pass, reduced price, or reduced rate of service from any person, firm, or corporation operating a public utility or engaged in business of a public nature within the city, or from any person known to him to have or to be endeavoring to secure a contract with the city. The provisions of this section shall, be, shall not apply to the transportation of the police or firemen in uniform or wearing their official badge and the same is provided by ordinance. The last one is powers of the mayor, section D. Mayor's right in council. The mayor shall be entitled to a seat in but not on the council. And along with the finance director, law director, and such other department heads as directed <coughs> by the mayor shall attend or be represented at all meetings of the council. The mayor has have the right to recommend ordinances, resolutions, and motions and the right to participate in the discussion of all matters before council, but shall not vote in council. At the request of the mayor, the heads of the respective departments shall be given an opportunity to participate in the deliberations of council and the legislation pertaining to their departments, but shall have no vote. Okay, that's all. What I wanted to say here is, number one, I'm glad Ms. Stanbury came up. Uh, I guess eight, 89 months ago, Ms. Stanbury and myself and a guy named Robert Jones got out in the community and circulated recall petitions for the mayor. <coughs> we walked the whole city. We walked in the rain. You need to hear this. Okay. We turned them in. We came up short. Okay. This is your participation. We turned them in. Okay. I stepped out there as a council person because I felt it was the thing that needed to be done, but the people didn't step up. One of the other issues in our city, as we, if you come and, and engage and you have that right, is that we're not voting like we should. Our voting totals are horrendous. Horrendous. One thing that I do monthly, and Ms. Ms. Stanbury will confirm, is I have monthly meetings and the whole thing is centered around voting. And we have one of the more active groups in Cuyahoga County. The recall of North. We busted our butts on that. Busted our butts. We out the rain. It was just three of us. Okay, we talked about this, but when it comes to doing the work, and only three stepped up, and I had an advantage because I know the voters. I knocked on doors, waiting for them to come and all like that, and we still came up short. Then when we had a, a recall election, and it came time to vote, they kept the person in there for, on another situation. So you totally separate from the mayor. So you saw I me mean, hear one, I hear one thing when it comes to action. This was action. No. Nothing happened. Okay? Nothing happened. What I'm concerned about with I find out your situation in the city. That is the most profound thing going on right now. No matter what we say, what we do. We don't have the tax base we used to have. We don't have any new revenue coming in, whether the mayor's coming
him here or not. We're not going to be around in the next two years if we don't do something profound in terms of getting money in the city. We got, as you hear all the time, 5,000 people to work, 11,000 seniors that go on and on and on. You can't run the city on osmosis. You can't run the city on a dream. You need money. You need money. So unless we change that narrative, we have a problem. Now, can we get people to move in here? And, and I believe, and I'm saying it publicly, I believe this is a gym. Okay, but nobody stepped in to help us, and I need to say this. I wrote a letter to the governor. You heard it? I got a call from his office. Asked him to give us 20 million or give us some money to help us in a rainy day fund is now two billion. Not two million, two billion. Ain't nothing happening. Okay, so unless we get on this road of economics, all of this is for naught. I'm, I'm giving you the real deal here. Okay, we can participate, but if we can't maintain the infrastructure, if we don't have the revenue, we're going to stop uh, I don't care what's met the qualifications is, he's right. If we don't have the money to pay the police, we got to lay them off. If we don't have the money to pay the fire, we got to lay them off. That's crucial to a city. So we got to come up with a plan. I hope these great minds and they can do that. If we don't do that, we got a problem. Now, Mackenzie, Conway, it's a hope. This council set up because I said publicly, you heard me for a year, I said the, the petitions are fraudulent. I knew they were because I looked at them. Okay? But it took a long time for them to make a decision. That's right. Okay? So now the decision's in our favor. So we need a plan. Somebody said, a, you said it, Saki. We need a plan for economic development. We need to, we need to reach out to universities, to all of them, and, and say, come in here and help us, not take us over. That's right. Okay. Are you familiar with Harlem? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Well, Harlem ain't like it in Harlem. I used to be when I was up in New York. Okay. They took it over. So we are a gym. So are we going to sit back and, and fight each other and complain? Or are we going to come up with, a, with an economic development plan that moves us forward? That's right. What can we agree on? That is the question I must ask. Is there anything that we can agree on as, as a people? What is it? What is it that we can agree on? We need to reach some consensus there, okay? The commitment. The good news today was after all, after we were down there. We went to the court, okay? We challenged it. We got a good ruling, okay? So now, these people have expertise in terms of getting the players to come in here to help us, okay? We need help. When I reached out and asked RTA to come in, I didn't know what they were going to come in, but they came in here. So people are willing to help us. If the land is important, if we're unique, if it's home rule, we got to change this. We have got to find where we can where we can agree on things and work on things, not point the finger at each other all the time. Amen. Ain't nobody perfect up here. Amen. Okay, then ain't nobody would ever be. And somebody talked about the salary, it ain't about the salaries, or we, we wouldn't be here. It's about we want to do better. And I don't get I get a hundred or something dollars every two months. Once they take out the taxes and take out the health care, there ain't nothing there. There ain't nothing there. So it ain't about the money. It ain't change. And check this out. I'm saying it. It's been 30 years since we got a raise. 30 years. Have we ever worked on a job and not got a raise in 30 years? Whether you part-time or not. Come on. Come on. Service. So. Service. The service department. We serve, and I can say this after 18 years of being on here, because my heart is in it. I care about people. I try to make the meetings, most of the meetings, wherever they are, I act. You asked me to, to, to do something with this ARCO thing, I did it. I did it. And then I don't just wait for email. I went back to, to, to his, uh, uh, his place and say, they said he wasn't there. And I don't think he's going to respond. Okay, because I don't think he really feels he has to. That's right. I think the only thing he's concerned about is I'm cool with the mayor. That's all that matters. Exactly. The hell with, with, with exactly. us. Okay, so I'm going to set down on this because I think it's important. Because I said we got some sharp people coming in here, Irby, Saxton, Saki, and all that. I'll sit down with you on some things that we can agree upon to move forward to bring some money in this city, get some development in, in this city because it's coming. It's coming. Uh, Circle lease down in Lakeview, it's already built. 
for Universal Circle people. Okay, there's gonna be another section to it. The development is coming, and it ain't no joke about we got the best land in the state. We are! The land locked down there. So as long as we're fighting each other, this perception that they can't get along, they fight all the time, we're not gonna get anything done. If we got developers who want to develop something, that's, that's, that's doing something, we got to we got to work with them. So when, when I prayed before I came here, and I then I sit down and this, the thing that came to me in my prayer was, what can we agree on? I knew I was going I've been hearing this for years. We got to agree on something. It didn't work on it. So let me win so that it be told. I have spoken. Thank you. the residents, per the charter, i.e., the mayor, 
and the finance director. Mr. Smedley does not have the certification or the qualification in the municipal finance necessary to be an ex officio for the finance director, <coughs> nor does he have a law degree to discuss other legal areas concerning layoffs, contract disputes. As the law director, you were remiss in your duty of answering those areas of questions. As for the council, the council had already studied the appropriations and made their decisions because of the time constraints for passing the budget, not because of Smith's presentation, which was lacking in documented information that was available in the council office records. Also, please be aware that council always aware of the state of the city in finance and its finance. We live it every day. Council is the governing body of the city and Mr. Smaddy is a resident and an employee of the city. The decision is to, the decision to pass or not to pass the budget rests solely with the council based upon facts, figures, and the, the certification of resources. Regarding your second from the paragraph, last paragraph, talking about state auditor and management, merger, annexation, at the time council and Mr. Smedley were currently in litigation, and I personally felt it was inappropriate and a conflict of interest for this topic to be discussed. Now, that's what I think of Mr. Smedley. Mr. Smedley, and those that were sitting here, remember, I asked for the certificate of resource. Mr. Smedley said, well, look in here. You will see it. It's all in the appropriations. I don't have it. It's upstairs. Like you said, when you come here and you're looking at the appropriations, everybody should be able to see the appropriations. I have sat here time and time again and have read the information on the certificate of resources. The certificate of resources come from your local government, which will tell you exactly how much you got. Mm -hmm. All right, the certificate of resources, they didn't tell you the other day, had been amended twice. Mm -hmm. Okay? And he was talking about 13,000, it's 16,000. And then when you're talking about individual topics and monies, they have to take the, the auditor's office, told our Mr. Johnson that he had to come up with what was missing from the total. And it didn't match, okay? So they did what they had to do. They had deficits, so the deficits had to be covered. So they took monies from other funds and cleared out to, uh, from the general fund and cleared out the deficit. Not only that, they were lacking, and what I'm told, and I'm telling you right now, what I was lacking, what they were lacking, is the fact that they couldn't do a balanced budget and couldn't do it because the domestic violence is under the court, and the court does not pay for the health care. Mr. Johnson said they they uh, they uh, negotiated backwards and forward, and finally the uh, the judge stated that he would pay for their health care. At that point, the money became even. It became, it matched the certificate of resource. It came from uh, 16 million zero zero point zero to 16 point six something something, which is on the back of here. Mm -hmm. Let me make sure I get it right. It was 16 million zero zero five point two six three. By one, and it needed to come up to 16,666 something. All right, 
that's flattened it out. That's what you needed to know. That's what you <coughs> needed to hear from Mr. Smedley. And absolutely, there is no chief of staff. And I want to say one thing more. I am the chair of personnel and appointments. So you know what my job consists of. <laughs> 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 okay, I guess that brings it up to me. I, mm -hmm. Al Porter, Mr. Porter Lee? Yeah. Mr. Porter, it's a lot of good things. A lot of other people here said, listen, home rule. Yeah. It's up to us to take care of mm -hmm. ourselves. Mm -hmm. This program, an ambassador program, Mr. Hines should be recognized for cleaning up paid, check, and those are some of the black brands that are involved. Under the ambassador program, we just want to recognize good ambassadors, good citizens. Mr. Irby, you said how you used to cut the civic. That's a good neighbor. That's a good ambassador. The patch of pothole program is simply designed to help, <coughs> help the city help ourselves. Now it says $150, the city buys it for $50, and you donated $150, we'll just buy three tons, right? We're not paying $150 and they're only charging us $50. If it's $50 and you donate $150, we'll get more material to fill in the holes, right? Now when you look at the certificate of resources and it says a line item, four street repair, and equipment, that's fine and dandy, but that number, as we all know, is not going to by itself cover all the potholes and all the street repair and all the equipment and the repairs to the equipment, right? Listen, I'm going to keep pushing this, and I hope my residents will get behind it and become good ambassadors because as we move forward, the certificate of resources is destined to shrink. We're going to have to do more of this. We're going to have to help ourselves more. That's boarding up a house, picking up trash, cutting grass, participating in a patch of pothole program. And a couple, a couple other notes. Before I forget, it comes to helping ourselves. Many of you know I do food pantries for the summer. The one at the Kappa House starts this Saturday, 12 to 2. Food pantries, which we give out vegetables, <laughs> fruits, right? Kappa House is up by Shaker Square. It's on uh, Shaker Boulevard, going up by Shaker Square, 12 to 2 this Saturday. Next month, the first Friday, we're going to start here across from Popeyes, 3 to 5, first Friday of the month. Please come out, get yourself some fruits and vegetables. Again, it's just a way of us helping ourselves, right? What else did I have? Uh, hoop house details. If anyone would like to talk to me about the hoop houses, I can I can try to give you an explanation on as best as I understand. Uh, fire department contract. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, we broke the contract last Thursday when we passed the budget. Right, the contract, as many of you know, alluded to, it's a minimum manning of ten. We took it down to eight. We didn't break it because we wanted to break it. And I know many of you are union and go buy contracts. We don't have the money to pay. We had to break it, so we'll probably end up in court behind that. Um, let's see. I think that's it. Oh, Smedley. Smedley's name was on the lawsuit. Our McCoy left. That, that's why we listed him. His name was the one that was on there. Thank you all for coming out tonight. That concludes our meeting. Can I get a motion to uh, adjourn? So moved. Thank you all for coming out.